All right, what's going on, folks? We made it all the way down to Laguna Atascosa. So we got drawn for this hunt. Me, Daniel, and Kyle. Daniel drove all the way down here. We powered through, did it. It was fun. And <laughs> did it overnight. Got a little sketchy at some point. And then just pulled off the road and you got two or three hours of sleep. I don't think I slept at all, but got my coffee. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm excited, man. Um, so we got our bikes all set, bino rigs, packs. So we're going to do some scouting. So we're just going to bike in, see if we can find some signs, some good areas, uh, and just kind of get a game plan going for the rest of our hunt. Pretty exciting time. Hopefully we'll see some Neil guy, some whitetail, and I just found Clint's bike tire. Oh, yeah. My little cap. There's your cap. Yep, I'm already losing stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I'd want to just get past this immediate area. Because yeah. if we set up anywhere in here, even if it looks awesome, everybody will become, you know, flow by us. Because this place is so large and you're only allowed in one hour before legal sunrise, one of the predominant strategies that's not much of a secret anymore is to ride a bicycle back in as far as you can set up and then find another spot to go hunt from. Yeah. That was our strategy as well and we were hoping to find a place that wasn't as obvious where we weren't going to be piled up right with a whole bunch of other people. Well, it's, this may be nice just for the sake of visibility is a little better. I mean, it looked awesome back there, but it's so thick you can't see anything. They're huge. Yeah. Those are probably 250. Oh, easily. See the ones on the right are coming over. So we're an hour into our scout, and we've got about 10 cows, 10 no guy cows located. So we came over here because we saw some vultures on a tree and we were gonna try to bust them up and see them all fly up, which would have been cool on video. And when we're looking, I looked out to the right and I'm like, man, what are those cows doing in the middle of the field? And Pliny's like, dude, those are Neil guy. And sure enough, we, we found, oh, they're going, they're moving, they're moving, they're moving. Well, we were zooming around on our bikes and we jumped up. I saw a doe running off and then another one, then another one. Then they bumped more deer and so we saw, what do you think? Like two, two little bucks, four or five does. Four or five does, two little bucks, another doe then popped up and was uh, bedded down right in front of us and she kind of popped up and scurried along. And one, one really good buck, definitely yeah. a shooter buck. So, man, it was it 9.30 in the morning and we've seen... 13 or 14 <laughs> mule guy and seven or eight deer. It's a pretty good scout in my book. Pretty good scout. We put a couple more miles on our boots very quickly, knowing that this was still our best time to scout and that animal activity was gonna shut down during the heat of the middle of the day. Dude, what's crazy is just like, it's like the water in the sky, just meat. Yeah. And there's trout. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know what they are. might just be like giant mullet. It was interesting to see these little crabs everywhere, even when you weren't close to the water. Yeah, that's a <laughs> community poo pile if I ever saw one. Look at the size of this thing. Golly. Well, I mean, it's pretty close to the area where we're seeing them all. Yeah. Hang out. Kara Kara. Kinda fancy stogie. Access stogie. Oh, nice. Access hunter stick stogie. Yum. Delicious. Refreshing snack. So we scouted that other unit. It's crazy. Everything's so big out here. We probably only saw a third of it in total, but we saw a lot of critters. So we're checking out a totally different place, uh, just with the goal of learning as much as we can. So we're gonna bike out here, look around.
It was interesting to see the giant wind farms that always kind of haunted the horizon right outside of the sanctuary. I was shocked that something like this could actually be set up close to a waterfowl sanctuary. Oh, we saw, yeah, saw a giant boat engine. We pushed on to explore even more. Sometimes the bikes carried us, and sometimes we carried the bikes. Yeah, it's like we're on the beach in Mexico. So I think we all agreed that while that was a fun trip to the lake, <laughs> It is just wide open and we kind of don't want to waste our time out here. It was pretty. It was, it was pretty, pretty. High. Like there could be animals out here, but it's just so open. I don't know how we do anything about it. We got some rest at our camp and the next morning the hunt was on. We got out in the gray light before dawn with our bikes and our bows. We were a bit early for the rut, but I tried some gentle rattling just to see if I could get a response. Nothing. Well, I didn't really get to sit where I wanted to this morning. There's that fire break that had nice green grass in it. It seemed like a great deer spot, but when I was almost where I wanted to sit, there was a guy like pretty close to where I was going, so I didn't want to screw up his hunt. Then I started backing out, and there was a guy who had walked in behind me, so I kind of got stuck in the middle, so I just went into the woods, sat in this little brushy area trying to look on a game trail. Not the best spot, not a bad spot, but it would have just been kind of counting on something randomly walking by. So I think, well, it's still early. The sun's kind of shining on me now. I'm going to pack up and head out to that kind of open area where I saw the snow guy yesterday. Well, that was wild. I was on the move here and I heard some brush cracking, so I stopped got ready and I actually saw a wounded Nilgai cow come charging through here she was running but uh, had blood on her side looked like a high shoulder hit so I'm wondering if that it was that guy who was where I was originally gonna set up because she came from that way so she went charging out of that brush the hit looked high so I, I don't know if it's gonna be a fatal hit or not I'm not even seeing any blood so, if it is, I hope that guy finds her, but I, I don't feel good about it, but I'm not going to stand here and I'm not going to track somebody else's animal. Um, the, that animal needs to bed down for a long time anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to keep moving on, but <laughs> a little bit of excitement this morning. Alright folks, I moved out to that edge. I saw a Nilgai cow. I saw her standing there. I saw her walk about 10 yards and bed down, I think about 200 yards from me. So the wind's going this way. The wind's going this way. She's right there. But she's looking downwind, so I think if I approach 90 degrees to the wind, I've got a chance at this stalk. So I want to just try to get within 70 is my max pin, so it's the longest shot I'd take, but hopefully I can get closer than that. So I'm going to try it. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to leave my camera and pack here. I hate leaving my pack, but now let me get a little closer, then I'll leave it. Um, I just don't think I can crawl through this with the pack and tripod and all this stuff. So let me get 50 yards closer, then I'll set you all down. Try to sneak in there with the GoPro. Alright, she stood up and she's looking around. I don't know if she caught a glimpse. 
harms me or not. She's not spooked, but something's got her on alert. I was able to slip out of my pack. So I'm just gonna hunch down in the grass and just sit here and wait till she goes back to bed. Y'all, I am literally crawling on my belly and hands and knees through this crap. And a lot of it's cactus. My hands are full of cactus. <laughs> and so I've realized it's a cow with a calf. And the calf will stand up and look around for a while. And then bend down and then Malbum will stand up and look around for a while. And right now they're both standing up. But I think my best chance to get really close is sneaking up on the calf. I think I have a better chance of sneaking in on her. This could be a several hour stalk. But I'm just gonna keep going. Hands and knees through this stuff. Just to see how close I can get. I'm at about 120 now. I've moved forward probably about 40 yards. I saw them get up walk about 15 yards and bed down a little further in those trees which yeah they're further but I think it helps me because it's a little bit more cover not this wide open so I think I can be sneakier when I have some cover but I've already covered most of that wide open stuff Y'all, that was intense. So, I think in total that stock was from where I started to where the nil guy ended up, probably closer to 300 yards. But I got all the way into 48, 48 yards. So totally within range. I was belly crawling through this open stuff and then I was in those little scrub mesquites. And so I was able to kind of hop from one tree to the next and I say hop, I wasn't jumping, but um, I wasn't necessarily on my belly either, but man, 48 yards, and then I don't know if she saw my face, because everything else is wearing this camo, this Badlands approach that really matches this terrain. Um, so either she saw my face or she heard me, you know, crushing brush or something, but the cow stood up, ran about 10 yards, and she was totally within range, but just, it was like this between me and her, so... If I had a rifle, it would have been an easy shot, but not with a bow. So she stood there and then she made this big, like, bark kind of cough sound. I'd never heard a nil guy do that, but she made that sound, which is obviously sounding the alarm, and then her and the calf just bolted. So they're clear out of here for sure. So I don't know. I've seen other nil guy using this area, so I think I'm going to go take a look at where they're bedded, see what I can learn. Maybe go set up in there just in case something else comes in from another direction. Or at a minimum, it's a shady spot. Take a little nap, take a little break, recollect. Alrighty, well I took a little rest. Just sat in the shade here. Glassed out in this open area for a long time. Didn't see anything. It was good to just kind of chill out, regroup a bit. Um, <laughs> drink some Mountain Ops Ignite too, so kind of got some energy back again after <laughs> crawling across the thorns in the bright sun starting to get my strength back so I'm gonna head kind of back in the way I came I realized I'm actually closer to this other gate and I'm starting to see people work my way from that direction than where I came uh, so I think I need to kind of work back that way I'm really just gonna see if I can find a good spot for tonight It's wild how quick it goes from dry plains to thick, thick underbrush. Well, it is hot. It does not feel like deer hunting weather. But it's about two o'clock in the afternoon, so I better be getting a move on for my evening sit. I scouted a little bit, kind of during midday. There's an area that I want to try. Now, it's a little tough because there are multiple entrances uh, on this property and it's halfway between them 
So I'm actually gonna go out a different way I came in and Daniel's gonna pick me up, hopefully. <laughs> but I'm gonna go, I, I found one possible stand location. I'm gonna go look at a couple others just to see what's up and then kinda set up a spot and wait till dark. Well, maybe that other spot won't work so well after all. I started walking back there and I thought I saw a pop-up blind and then sure enough I saw a dude inside the pop-up blind waving his hat which is kind of the universal signal for get the heck out of here. This is my area and I've done it to two guys already today and it sucks that we're so close together on this huge piece of property. <sighs> but. I'll just go set up over here. I mean, he's probably 400 yards away from me, but I guess with archery, that's okay. All right, I think I've got a pretty decent spot for the evening. So there's this field with these little yellow flowers that I've seen deer eat a lot at my place in South Texas. And then there's a pretty heavy deer trail coming in and out of this corner. Not a lot of fresh poop, but it looks like a good spot for an evening sit where they're coming from the woods to the open field to eat. I've got this little screen up in front of me. I don't know how much that's actually doing, but having this big tree behind me and the setting sun behind me at least will keep me from being silhouetted out here. So now I sit and I wait. I sat there in the heat all afternoon without seeing anything. It wasn't until the very edge of legal light when I just had a couple minutes left when I saw a few deer break from the edge of the mesquite trees. When they first came into the field, it was looking like they were gonna head my way, but then they started feeding and just looking around and slowing down. They were almost in range of my farthest pen but with this fading light, the only way I was gonna get a shot is if they came in extremely close to 20 or 30, where I knew it was a shot I felt confident in. Unfortunately, those deer had other plans and never came in close. I was glad to know they were there and that I could give it another try tomorrow. In the pre-dawn light, I was able to glass up some Nilgai and some deer at a distance. I was able to set up my long lens and get some cool footage. It was interesting to see how these two different species with ancestry on opposite sides of the world would hang out and just feed and walk around together. And then of course, another Kara Kara Eagle. Pretty cool. Around noon, I went back to the ground blind where I was sitting the night before. I was only there an hour before I got a call from Daniel saying that he had shot a doe. Kyle and I met up with him to help find it and drag it out. was super excited for Daniel and glad that just one of our group got something. So Kyle and I were back to the grind. Oh wow. Yeah, crazy. Alright, good luck buddy. So rattling is not a huge part of my hunting strategy usually, but down here, 
I don't think the deer have been called at too much, so I figured I'd give it a try. I got a nice breeze in my face, overlooking kind of one of these cut throughs. You never know, it's the middle of the day, it might get something up that otherwise wouldn't be moving. After another failed attempt to rattle something in, I went back to the meadow where I had sat the night before. I buried under the next mesquite tree, hoping to be a little bit closer to the path where they had headed in, to hopefully intercept them on their way to feed on those yellow flowers. And once again, I had deer come in, out of range, right at the end of legal light. No shot. I came back in the next morning when it was foggy and steamy out, hoping that the morning pattern would be a little bit more advantageous to my position. I got out a little bit earlier this morning. I actually ditched the bike earlier this morning too realized I could walk in that wet grass just as fast as I could ride and I could be a little sneakier. So I got set up in the dark and it started drizzling and it's kind of just stopping now. I saw one white-tailed doe go running by at about 150 yards. Don't know if something spooked her or what. I'm gonna sit tight, hope another one comes my way. And sure enough, I had a little yearling doe walk by at about 30 or 40 yards. I think I could have made the shot, but this was a very young, small deer and a good one to pass. The next morning I rode out with Kyle and we set up at the edge of the large meadow where we had seen the Nilgai cows the day before. It was eerie to see the fog rolling in and see the trees and the windmills floating like islands in the distance. We saw several other hunters. Likely they had spotted the Nilgai and had the same idea, but the Nilgai were one step ahead of us and had moved away. I went back to the meadow and yet again I saw a lone doe moving through the tall grass, but today she was out of range and moving even more quickly than the day before, so no go even if I was going to take the shot. It was now the last day of our hunt, so we decided to pack it up and go to another spot, much further than all the other hunters were going. It didn't look like a great spot, but we were hoping to get lucky just by going further than anyone else. I was sitting in the tall grass with my bow right on the edge of this field when I heard some crashing around me. I heard a hog snort and I drew my bow. I drew and let down three times before it finally happened. A sow poked her head out and I let one fly as quick as I could. Unfortunately, I didn't get the shot on camera. It was a hit, but I think I spined her, so I needed to put another one in to finish her off. Kyle and Daniel met me in the field. The three of us made quick work of the downed hog, we threw it on our packs, and headed back out to the trucks. I have lots of opportunities to shoot hogs in Texas, and it's not really what I was hoping for on this trip, but between this hog and Daniel's doe, I'm glad that we at least got something. This was a fun but very challenging hunt. I hope you enjoyed this story. Until next time, stay safe, be free, and never stop seeking adventure.